video games these days, and at least the ones that sell are way too derivative. There's no real innovation anymore, just another retread of the same few tired gameplay features, plot elements, and character types. If it's not a gray and brown, grizzled space marine with a neck like a draft horse, mutely firing into dozens of enemies while performing quick-time events or taking active cover in a sewer, it's a decades-old franchise with a new coat of paint thrown on it. It's a blatant attempt to market to the lowest common denominator with violence or titillation. Or, it, well, it's from Japan. Yeah, give me the old days, when games were vital and full of creative energy. You know, you can hear that speech from just about any gamer born before the year 2000, and while it's not like there's no merit to the complaint that the industry could use a shot of novelty, you can't look to the past as a halcyon age where innovation was the rule and derivative games didn't dominate. No, it's always been this way. There have always been cash-ins on good games spawning sequel after repetitive sequel, just like there have always been innovators, people who strove to break the mold and produce something unique. This Let's Play will focus on The Colonel's Bequest to Laura Bow Adventure. Released in 1989 by Sierra Entertainment, which is to say, in the golden age of graphical adventure games, by one of the giants of graphical adventure games, The Colonel's Bequest could have plugged into the familiar formula of those games and done fairly well for itself. Sierra and LucasArts, the two adventure game titans, had the form down to a science. The players placed in a linear environment, stuffed full of objects. The key to progressing through the plot is to solve puzzles, and the puzzles are solved by combining objects in the environment. While sometimes obvious, frequently the puzzles would be solved by lengthy chains of logic that made sense only to the developers, and lead to the general strategy of picking up everything that wasn't nailed down and rubbing your whole inventory on everything that was. As I mentioned, gameplay was linear, puzzle-based, and NPCs existed as window dressing, sources for items to solve puzzles, or occasionally as puzzles themselves if they were antagonists. There was no concept of time or urgency out of some limited timed puzzles, and all the important plot points would be discovered on a regular progression through the game. If that sounds a lot like a text adventure game, that's because graphical adventure games were essentially text adventure games with some nice pixels thrown in. The Colonel's Bequest was a graphical adventure game, but it was also a murder mystery game, and the developers wanted it to have a different feel than most of the graphical adventure games out there. In pursuit of this, they attempted to try new game mechanics and challenged a lot of the cliches prevailing in adventure games. The game's character-driven instead of puzzle-driven, with great emphasis placed on careful observation and noting of the feelings and moods of the NPCs, as well as a progression of time not necessarily dependent on solving all the puzzles that theoretically lets the player pass through the game with virtually no understanding of the happenings of the evening. The Colonel's Bequest tried for a whole new experience. While it's certainly not a perfect game, and some of its mechanics feel half done, and some others simply don't work at all, it's different and unique enough to merit some extra attention. Some of the things they tried in this game presage developments that happen in games decades later, and the environment and the experience is unique enough that I think you'll get a lot of enjoyment out of it. I feel I should also add that there is an additional reason for this Let's Play. The Colonel's Bequest was one of the first video games I played, and as a five-year-old, I was wholly unprepared for its challenges. Limping through the night, constantly dying in just about every way possible, I finished the game with the lowest possible score, barely conscious. So, let's see the ins and outs of one of the most unique games of the graphical adventure game era. Let's get a chance to redo a game that unequivocally defeated me in my past. Let's play.